the Knicks are red hot. Super excited for how hot the Knicks have been. Funny, I'm pretty sure the only team with a longer only team with a longer win streak right now than the New York Knicks is the Philadelphia 76ers. So that's exciting. Marcus Camby. What an old what a name. What a name drop. Alright. Goodbye, Spreewell. I loved you. I loved you, the trail Spreewell, but you don't play anymore. What's up? Joe's here. Mill's gonna be here. We were actually supposed to start about 20 to 30 minutes ago. It's totally my fault. And now Mill's not here yet, so I'm just gonna filibuster until then. We have an opponent. And I think it's the easier opponent. Straight up. I don't care if the Philadelphia 76ers have a better player, a hurt player, a better hurt player in Joel Embiid than the he did originally with uh, what was healthy Jimmy Butler. And now he's not healthy anymore. New York forever. I've known you've been Ben the whole time. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Uh, Mill will be here momentarily. Uh, salute to everyone in the chat already. Thank you for already tuning in. Much appreciated. Um... We got, I got a lot of stats. I looked up so much stuff about the Knicks and Sixers prior to prior to coming on, waiting to put everything in. It's uh, I can't even. It's hard to explain how much all of the Sixers' weaknesses just go right into what the Knicks' strengths are: rebounding, three-point shooting, or lack thereof. Um, just the fact that Joel Embiid is like a hurt, a, a hurt guy playing right now, like 70% and the Knicks have one of the best combinations of defensive centers in the league. I know they're not Rudy Gobert. They're not Victor Wembeyama. They're on their own, obviously, but Isaiah Hartenstein and Mitch Robinson is like as good as it can get from like a non-superstar tier level center. Not Bam Adebayo, not Anthony Davis, but they're pretty close, man. If I heart qualified, he would he would be getting second team All NBA defensive votes. Mitch was almost a he was almost like a a defensive player of the year candidate for the first like month and a half, two months of the season. There was like real talk: is Mitch going to be better than Gobert this year? Little did we all know that Victor Wembanyama in his first year could have been uh could have been almost as good as Gobert this year. Um, I know Dope Soul is already, already uh, recording. I know they have a lot of people watching. So anyone that is over here, thank you. Pr- appreciate it for tuning in. Again, Mill will be on momentarily. Uh, just to mention our sponsor, we do have a sponsor right now, Autograph. Really cool app. Uh, check out the description link on YouTube. The way the app works is that basically puts all content for any individual NBA team or any individual college basketball team in one place. Check them out. Download the app. Use our code BKE. Uh, we're doing a draw. They're doing a drawing tomorrow for dirt cheap Knicks tickets. As long as you can build up 200 points in the app, which all that that entails is read a couple articles, listen to a couple podcasts, which you don't, you don't have to even do the whole thing all the way. If you read a little bit of the article, you get points. If you listen to part of the podcast, you get points, get to 200 points, uh, enter for your chance to win Knicks tickets between noon and 1230. I'm pretty sure that if you're the one selected, to win, you'll get tickets for either game one or game two for $24 each, which even if you can't go, if you buy the tickets from winning and then sell them, yeah, you got a major come up. So in essence, you could literally be winning like $600 if you win. If you're the one selected, go to the app autograph, use our code BKE. The link is in the description. Man, I just want to, oh God, I just want to talk about Joel Embiid, you know? So Let's get right into it. So I posted on the BKE uh, Twitter account and our Threads account a bunch of numbers for Joel Embiid specifically. Uh, where am I? I found me. Joel Embiid specifically about his matchup against both Isaiah Hartenstein and OG Ananobi over the past couple of years. He did not. Him and Mitch Robinson have not played each other in two years, and I don't like going back too far into matchup history. For players, especially one if one of them is like outside of their prime or still building up to be the player they were going to be, that they could potentially be. Mitchell Robinson two years ago, um, I know he got injured in January and got surgery or December and got surgery, so it kind of takes away from this. But if a player is at 24 years old, they're not as good as they were at 26 years old. The guy is getting better defensively, so even if I could have found, which I easily could have found, stats about Embiid 
doing well or not well against Mitch, which he did used to do pretty well the last time they played in 2021, the 21-22 season. I just don't want to take that into account. So the two guys, and for what it's worth, this is worth mentioning, I don't think Precious Achua gets too many minutes in this series unless Bogdanovich is actually out with his uh, scoped wrist, which we will talk about as well in a little bit. I don't think Precious is going to see Embiid or the floor very much, if at all, because Joel Embiid is, would eat a seven foot one, seven foot two, Joel Embiid would eat six foot eight pressures that you alive at the five. So I don't want to even think about that. Um, in the past two years, OG and Anobi has seen Joel Embiid six times, five times as a Raptor, once as a Nick in January. Anyone that follows us on Twitter or threads, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to basically read off what I posted before, but just for anyone listening, I want them to know. Uh, Joel Embiid scored 26 points across those six games as with OG as the primary defender. Um, out of those 26 points, he shot less than 43% from the field. Uh, he went two or four from three. A lot of his threes are wide open. So for anyone being assigned the primary defender on a Joel Embiid three, it's more likely he was open and the guy tried to close out. That guy ends up being assigned the primary defender, according to NBA.com. Uh, Embiid drew four, flat, four shooting fouls. And Anobi got him to commit three turnovers, and he's been blocked two times. So he shoots 43%. He's scored 26 points in six games on the guy, just over four points a game. Not, not the best numbers. Uh, Rodney Boatwright goes, is Embiid still hurt? I mean, so anyone that watched the game last night, I, he doesn't look healthy. He's playing. He's going to play. I would almost be willing to say they don't let you bet on Injury, you can't do that for very obvious reasons. Pretty good not to do that. Um, if you watch the game last night, the guy doesn't look healthy. If you watch him play the last the last five, six games of April he played, he played since April 2nd, coming back from injury, and then just missed the last game of the season. He's not, he's not Joel Embiid, especially on the defensive end. This guy's not covering a lot of ground. He's not rotating well. He is kind of... Looking a little Brooke Lopez in his old ages, old age ish, trying to cover the paint in a semi drop coverage while hopefully not having to cover screeners or go or cover pick and roll or be switched on anything. He's not moving that well, which I think is going to come into play a lot, especially when the Knicks have the ball. Um, shout out to everyone in the chat, by the way. New York Forever, I know you're Ben. Shout out to you. Knicks will be 2024 champs. What up? We were both trolling. Uh, we were both trolling. Uh, a Philadelphia 76ers uh, podcast earlier today. Uh, the Sixers chats can't give any valid reason why they think their team has a chance in New York. That's why you came here, buddy, so I can tell you a bunch of numbers why it's not looking good for Philly. Uh, just Nick salute as well. And uh, Precious could be a huge asset on the boards. He could. He definitely could. I just don't... I'm assuming this this series is going to have a lot of Mitch and iHeart, obviously, at the five. And then... Like our starters are going to be playing thirty-eight to forty plus minutes, and I think Deuce McBride is going to be the guy that gets the most minutes off the bench. I th I just don't think pre like Precious can only play if Paul Reed is out there if he's going to play the five, and I don't want him really playing the four because that destroys spacing. So I just I can never see Precious Achua cover Joel Embiid for one second this game. So if Precious can kill the second the second unit boards, I'm all for it. So again, Joel Embiid shot less, shoots less than 43% on OG and Anobi. Just so everyone knows what Joel Embiid has shot over the last couple of years as an MVP candidate. Uh, this past year, he shot 53%. Last year, he shot 55%. Uh, two years ago, he shot 50%. So for him to shoot 43, less than 43% on a guy that's the size of a power forward, OG and Anobi is one of the best players defensively in the whole NBA. For reasons like this, the fact that this guy can cover both Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey and Kelly Oubre, all viably three very different sized players with three very different capabilities. I would mention Tobias Harris, but there's a strong chance Tobias Harris isn't even in closing lineups in this game. Philly fans are so done with him, and Tobias Harris is so done with being booed. I gotta say. Um, two Isaiah, so two Isaiah Harnstein who has also seen Joel Embiid four times in the last two years. Uh, only once this year, obviously the January game that the Knicks dominated, um, and three times last year, which uh, we know iHeart's been ha handling his Achilles thing for the past couple years, but last year he wasn't as good of a defender. He wasn't in Tibbs' system as long. 
He didn't have Othello Harrington for as long of a coach to really help him out. His his change last year to this year has been insane, and it's easy to see when he's covering a guy like Joel Embiid. So last year in three games, Embiid shot almost over 69% on iHeart in across three games. He went nine of 13. Didn't cover him that much. It was way more. It wasn't Mitch actually. It was a lot of Sims and Taj. If I wanted to look up and add those guys again, um. But yeah, so he shot 69% last year and drew four fouls in iHeart. iHeart didn't get a single block or cause a single turnover during that time. And Embiid scored 26 points and only 13 shots. This year, in just the one game in January, the game that the Knicks won, uh, what was it, 128 to 96? Give or take, is that the right score? Let's just double check that because it's a wild score. Just want to really make sure you get this one right, you know? Uh, 128 to 92, I gave them too many points. I tried it. Philly, I tried to say you got 96. You got 96 in your other game, which was your highest scoring game against New York on the year. Not that good. No bueno. So the one game that I covered him this year, and B did score 21 points, but he only shot 9 of 21, which is actually the same exact number he shot against OG over two years. Um... Shot 9 of 21 from the field, so again, below 43%. Uh, drew two fouls. iHeart also blocked him the one time, which we have up on our YouTube channel as well. You can check that out. Uh, and caused five turnovers. She caused him to commit five turnovers in just the one game earlier this year when the Knicks won 128-92. to Major, major improvement by Isaiah Hartenstein. Shout out to him. Shout out to the coaching staff. Shout out to the system that they've been running. And I'm not going to be a full homer. I'll mention it. And Embiid hurt his ankle about two minutes, three minutes into the game. Definitely hobbled him a little bit. But based on what we're seeing with Embiid in his leg now, it kind of just looks like what he what he's going to be looking like for the next two to three weeks. That's They're not playing in three weeks. I'm letting you know right now. Obviously, as a Nick Page, and with all the numbers I'm about to give you, I'm picking the Knicks. I don't know if it's five, six, or seven. I want to say seven out of like humbleness, but I want to say five out of arrogance and honestly borderline realism. I'm going to pick Nixon five. But yeah, so Isaiah Hornstein's done so much better, honestly. Nick's, uh, Nick's 2020, Nick's will be 2024 champs. Oh, you changed your name, dude. Let's go. This was 2026. I love this. Uh, Embiid is on the decline. His mobility is non existent. Nurse is going to try to take Embiid away from the paint uh, to move Mitch and iHeart away from the rim. And Bede will get destroyed in the paint. Um, I, I think defensively, Embiid is going to have a lot of problems. I do think he's going to struggle in this series. And I think one of the things, one of the things I really want to get into is going to be the rebounding advantage that New York has over Philly. And even with Joel Embiid out there, the Knicks still have consistently out rebounded Philadelphia because while Embiid can do his thing and get his 30 and 10, 30 and 11, whatever it is, the rest of his team does not rebound that well. And Tobias Harris, Kelly Oubre are fours, kind of three, three and a half fours. They don't rebound that well. I'm more likely to rely on Kyle Lowry to actually die for loose balls than I am to rely on either of those guys. Uh, Luis goes there. They have no bigs after Embiid. Reed is the only big and he's six foot nine. All I see is food. Yeah. And again, that's like, if I'm going to play pressure to chew a lot, it's going to be against Paul Reed. It's not going to be against Joel Embiid for that exact reason. Uh, also Paul Reed's comments today, man. I mean, I get it. He's being honest. I, I'm, I know there's a lot of Nick fans that are like bulletin board material. That's BS. Like, the Celtics have a better team than the Knicks. I get why they wanted to avoid the Celtics. You don't say that. You don't go on a TV show or a live stream or FanDuel TV with Shams and say, as the backup center that averages four points and five rebounds a game most of the time, yeah, we wanted this team over the other team. You know who wouldn't say that on your team? Effing Tyrese Maxey or Joel Embiid. They are your stars, and they still wouldn't say that. Hello? Hello? Uh, Dion Alamante goes Knicks in five. Hell yeah. Uh, ben, do you accept me as a Knicks fan? No, you're a Nets fan. I don't understand. I mean, you. I mean, maybe you could change yourself, man. You start making your own videos and convincing everyone that you're a Knicks fan, I'll believe you. Uh, Abdul goes no more Burks, question mark. 
I think if Bogdanovich actually is missing games for his wrist uh, scope, I don't know the real word for it, but he got his wrist scoped, uh, according to Chris Percyinen. So if that's the case, then and the Knicks did go uh, Mitch, uh, Deuce, and then Precious a little bit off the bench, uh, Burks would be the ninth man. I don't see, especially with how much rest they've been having, them playing nine. I honestly don't see them playing eight that many t- all that often, too. I'm telling you, there's a chance that we don't see, like, we see Bogdanovich a little bit if he's available, and then maybe Precious, like, here and there. Like, it's not going to be that long of a rotation. And Burks, for him to be the ninth or tenth guy, I just think they would take Burks. I just don't think they would play him unless there's an injury. Reed didn't say anything crazy, but you're right. Exactly. It's not that crazy. It's it's an honest thing. It was an honest take. Like, yeah, you want to play the Knicks over the Celtics. I'm a Knicks fan. I understand that. Easy to see. You just don't say it. You just don't. You go. You wanted to win the game, so you get rest on Friday. You wanted to win the game because you wanted to be able to actually like just start building your building your game plan, putting your playbook together, just knowing who you want to face. You don't want to be in a one and done scenario, which the Heat without Jimmy Butler now are. And I don't know what's the line for tomorrow for the Heat uh, Heat Bulls game. Let's check that out because. The Heat are one and a half point favorites at home, which means on a neutral court, they would say the Bulls are favored without Jimmy Butler. You don't want to be in that position. That's what you say when you go on TV. You don't say, I wanted the Knicks because it's a better matchup. That's You just don't. You just don't do that. Uh, you don't get it. Uh, uh, Pops, Pops one, Pops one goes, Knicks got that grit hustle. Uh, Nick's cave goes, I want to see Shake Millen plays 45% from the field, 35% from three. Are we sleeping on him? I don't think I, I would be amazed if Shake got anything outside of garbage time. Truly. I, I would be absolutely dumbfounded. Maybe we're sleeping on him, but the guy's a buyout candidate. He was, he was got as a buyout. He's 27 years old. If you're a buyout at 27, 28, and you're not like Kyle Lowry, 37, 38, generally speaking, you're a fringe, you're a fringe NBA player, not even rotation player. So. Maybe Jake Millen's being slept on, but I don't think we're going to be the team that finds out, you know, not unless there's a couple more injuries. Um, so I want to get into some numbers real quick. Uh, I want to go through each of the four games that the Knicks played, but I do have to, like, obviously, we all know this. Uh, Embiid only played in one. OG only played in two. It's hard to, like, take all of those, all of that in consideration because, much like when we played the Cavs in the playoffs last year, I think we had seen their full lineup once and they had seen our full lineup once just based on the timing of injuries and stuff. So, I mean, little did we know that us punking the Cavs was really just a, men- a mindset thing and it almost didn't matter who was on the court outside of Brunson, but whatever. And Mitch. Uh, rebounding. This team, this team is in the 76ers, are a bad rebounding team. The Knicks rebounding rate this year Overall team rebounding rate. For anyone that doesn't know what rebounding rate is, it's what percent of missed shots do you, does your team get? Obviously, if you go with average, overall league average, it's 50-50. If the shot goes in, one team gets it. The other one, or the shot doesn't go in. One team gets it, one team doesn't. If you averaged out all of the rebounding rates for every team, it's 50%. So if you're above 50, you're above average. You're below 50, you're below average. It's probably one of the most simplistic stats to look at. Um. For 2023-2024 season, the Knicks were first in rebound rate at 52.6%. For offensive rebound rate, they were... I feel like I'm looking at this the wrong way because I thought they were near the top. Oh, I did do it the wrong way. Uh, Their opponent offensive rebounding rate, how many did their opponent uh, offensive rebound get? Less than 24%, good for 13th. Their opponent defensive rebounding rate. The Knicks were number one in how often their the opponent got the defensive rebound. The opponent only got the defensive rebound, which is supposed to be advantage defense, 70.6%. Utah was second. They were over a percent higher. That's how much off it was. Philadelphia. Again, the Knicks were first place with the rebounding rate overall, 52.6%. Philadelphia is all the way down. With Paul Reed talking crap, by the way, which if you're Paul Reed, you should, I don't know, do your job a little better as a big. They were 23rd at 49% for overall rebound rate. No good. No good. 
The Knicks are one of the top two teams in hustle. In hustle, loose balls gotten. I heard that through the, what's it called? Knicks, Knicks 2024 champs. We heard it today on the other podcast. The Knicks were second in hustle. You know what the Knicks, Sixers were? Sixth to last. Who are you? I've, I've, as anyone here that I know, I don't think a lot of people watch a lot of Sixers games, but when is the last time you saw Kelly Oubre or Tobias Harris die for a loose ball? I'll wait. I'll wait all day. I'll wait till this number goes down to zero. I have 320 in the chat right now. Shout out to all of you. 299 on Twitter, 21 on YouTube. Shout out. Uh, hopefully, Miller will come here soon. I'll wait for every single one to sign off. Let me know when Kelly Oubre or Tobias Harris go for a loose ball. You can't. You want me to let you know when uh, Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo go for a loose ball? Last game. The game before that. The game before that. The quarter before that. Like, hello? Your team isn't that great, Philly. You rely on Joel Embiid, who's hurt. You rely on Tyrese Maxey, who, when we get into his numbers against the Knicks, not that great, which caveat, not going to lie, Jalen Brunson also didn't have that great of a shooting year this year against the Sixers, but besides the point, you're not relying on the two of them to die for loose balls because they're your offense, and you can't have Joel Embiid dive any more than he already does. He's going to get hurt. I would, oh, to the thing I wanted to say before, over, under, you can't bet on this, but if you were to set the over-under on Joel Embiid finishing three and a half games in the series, taking the under, I feel like, would be the favorite. I can't rely. I just wouldn't rely on this guy to finish five, six, seven games. Straight up. Straight up. But you need them to dive on loose ball. Not them to dive on loose balls. You need Kyle Lowry. You need Nick Batum. And I think they would, but they're also old. You need Kelly Oubre. You need campaign. You need Tobias Harris. I wouldn't rely on them. Straight up, I wouldn't rely on them to do it. Like, and their defense, their rebounding is just like, not good. And they're long. Like all the guys I said are like long. Like the Knicks were like leading, like one of the top teams in rebound rate when we had RJ Barrett playing the four sometimes with Josh Hart. Like that's effort. And Nick Nurse, who's seen as like one of the best coaches in the NBA, which I have a hot take and I don't know if I believe it out of my own mouth, but it's, I like saying it because it's fun and funny. And Based on what I believe of Joel Embiid and the Sixers in their future, me saying this is going to look better and better, not worse and worse. Nick Nurse in 10 years will be seen more like Doc Rivers and less like Eric Spolstra. Nick Nurse got a title his very first year as a coach with Kawhi Leonard and a wild run and ran defense and a bunch of switchability with every guy on the court outside of Van Vliet being between 6'6 and 6'11 or 6'10", very small sample, very small height difference between all the guys that they had out there. I think it was very gimmicky, and I think the league's caught on to it a little bit, and I think Nick Nurse is going to not actually find the results or success that he would have sworn he would have after year one when peak, not hurt, load management worked out perfectly, lightning in the bottle, Kawhi Leonard just won him the title. Also made one of the craziest game-winning shots of all time against the same 76ers and the same Joel Embiid. We all remember that ball hitting the rim three times. We all remember Kawhi screaming and just the look of sadness on Joel's face walking away, baby. We all remember it. (sighs) Nick Nurse, come on. The Knicks are a better rebounding team. That's why they'll win the series. Uh, Knicks 2024 champs also said reality Boston would have been more favorable matchup for Philadelphia. I don't think... I, I don't know. I don't know. If, I think Boston would run them up, run them out of, out of the gym, honestly. Because again, to the Joel Embiid being hurt thing, like Tyrese Maxey can run up and down really quick. Uh, Ubre is good at good in the good in open court campaign. Who's probably not going to play that much this series is good in open court. Uh, Kyle Lowry knows what to do. But if your best player is the slowest prodding one, getting up and down, and Boston wants to run in jack threes, not the best. Uh, Dion L goes, we need to push the pace when Embiid is on the court, get iHeart on screen and rolls. I agree. And I think that w- even better or not better, but also worthwhile or useful with, uh, co- uh, with iHeart doing pick and rolls or screen and rolls for players. I want to get a lot of off ball screens with DiVincenzo. If you can get, if you can get Devo and then McBride in the game too, if McBride has it going, like he did the one game against Philly where he banged four threes in the first quarter. Also could be seeing our YouTube channel. Check out McBride's best quarter ever in the league. Shout out us. Um, if he's setting screens for these guys and they're just running around and pulling up, Embiid is not going to be able to close that space. 
He's hampered. He's hobbled. He's just not going to want to be at the three-point line. So not only do I want like I hard to be sending picks for Jalen Brunson for pick and roll action or pick and pop action. I want him sending them for Devo. I want him sending them for McBride. Uh, I would say Hart, but I, I just don't think Hart's going to jack like Hart just doesn't want to shoot half the time, which is always hurtful in different ways. But if Josh Hart starts doing the thing, which he has been more recently, the Alec Burks run, I think of all the things I've ever seen Alec Burks actually do well as a basketball player, he is the king of catching the ball on the run and running straight into the paint on the catch. Um, So if we can get picks and then have Hart run into stuff like that and then even run into Embiid a little bit or get Embiid really off his rocker a little bit, ah, uh, God, I just... I get it. I'm a Nick fan. Everyone here's an everyone here's a Nick fan. It's it's it could be blind homerism. It could be the same thing as the Heat last year. We all sing Nicks and five, Nicks and six, and then it just doesn't go that way. I just the other team's best player is currently slower, more prodding, and more damaged than he is at his peak. I just can't. And they suck at something that we're great at. And Tibbs just. I can't even imagine Thibodeau is going to tell them to not try to get rebounds. Like there is no like get back on defense. It's only Maxi is the only one that wants to run. That's it. Everyone else on this team is going to want to set up and take their time. <sighs> AP, great comment. We got this, folks. Uh, trust in in-season surgery. Please. That's the fastest I've ever seen someone come back from knee surgery. It was only a menis meniscus. Uh, cleanup i think that's why he was able to come back versus like acl mcl but I, dude what um a couple different nba players said that they wish oh austin rivers austin rivers was literally on tv the past couple days and austin rivers has played with Joel Embiid and thinks he's one of the best players he's ever played with in his life for a good reason he literally was like i wish Joel sat out the rest of the season i wish he didn't force his way back there's a chance he's gonna do more long-term damage Austin Rivers doesn't have a rooting interest. He's played for both Philly and New York. He he likes Joel Embiid as a person. I'm pretty sure he said he still talks to him, uh, not on regular, but at least occasionally. If the guy's answering this as his friend or as like a colleague and not like a, not like it's just some dude spitting out hot takes and spewing BS like I am right right now, he generally cares. He generally cares. You know what I mean? The knee goes, the game goes. Austin Rivers still mad we trade him. <laughs> Andio, salute. What up, man? Peace and blessings to you as well. Uh, Nick's Cave goes, I want to see McBride and Bogey run pick and pops. I really, dude, I really hope Bogdanovich is available. And I wish, I wish the Knicks weren't so Knicks all the time. And we actually had more information about like, about what's actually happening with this dude's arm, like wrist. Also, it's his left wrist. It's not even his shooting wrist, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, but I don't know if he's going to play. We, we don't know yet. We're probably literally not going to know until we see the injury for the first preliminary injury report come out tomorrow, whether he's questionable or out or whatever. Cause I'm literally looking at the Yahoo right now. Can we see this? No, uh, there we go. His name's not there. It's Randall, Charlie Brown, Jr. And Dwayne Washington, not even listed on there. Outside of Chris Percy, Island, have we even heard another official report about the cleaning? That's so insane. No Knicks PR, no Knicks media, no Ian Begley, SNY News, any of that, nothing. Just, what? This team is so secretive. It's really ran by the Italian mob. It's really funny. Uh, shout out shout out Ben, by the way. Biggest X Factor, the Sixers don't have pet thoughts. That's not their biggest X Factor. I do want to talk about um, X Factors for both teams. Like, if I was to pick, so and I'm... Uh, shout out to Locked On Knicks, uh, Gavin Shaw and Alex Wolf, who also is the EIC of the Strickland. Uh, they both said that they didn't count OG and Anobi as a uh, possibility for this because he's even though he's a defensive star, he's still considered a star. And when you pick X factors, you can't pick a star. So I'm not going to pick Brunson, OG, Tyrese, or Joel Embiid for either team. I'm going to start with the Sixers because I feel like it's an easier answer. It's got to 100% be Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is a known Nick killer. He's known to do a lot of, he's one of the very few guys that's actually gotten to the point in his career that he levels up in the postseason, not down, which knowing what Kyle Lowry was from 2013 to 2017, his whole shtick, let's see if I can actually find his numbers real quick while I'm, while I'm talking about this. His whole problem was that he got way, way worse throughout the postseason. 
let's uh mill's showing up let's go shout out mill let's uh see if i can find kyle lowry then i'll bring her up real quick so kyle lowry the first three years of his postseason career um that coincided with his uh playing not the first three he played in 2013 2014 but let's go to the next one so 2014 he got 12 points per game that year he averaged 18 in the regular season 2015 is his, his points per game went down too but his shooting and three-point shooting went down eight percent this guy was known as a choker in the postseason and then just magically the one year playing off Kawhi leonard and pascal who was better he won the title uh got way more got way more confidence and then in his old age which strap kyle lowry is old from an nba standpoint he's just become like this this guy that's the opposite of a choke artist. He rises to the occasion. It's really impressive. Kyle Lowry 100% has to be the Sixers uh, X Factor. And I'll do the Knicks X Factor, but let's get uh, let's get Mill up here first after I figure out how. Oh, that's why I wasn't there. Let's go to this. Let's uh, let's click this one. Let's uh, Mill, you ready? Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, my God. We're so zoomed in kind of. We're good. There we go. Mill, what okay. up? I think it's good. I think I think it's good. I think you uh your head to background ratio is perfect right now. I think we're good to go. Uh Mill, shout out. What's up? Uh oh, King Joe. I'm glad he came back, man. I'm sorry this I'm sorry the heat lost, I gotta say. I'm sorry that the heat lost because of Karma and Jimmy Butler getting hurt. But I mean, you guys were due at some point to have some bad things happen to you. Never wish that Jimmy Butler got hurt, but it ish is ish, you know. Who's been here <laughs> forever? It's Ben. All right, I figured. <laughs> Hello, yeah. oh, Ben. I don't he's know. Trying, how you're watching this. He's trying to beg to be unblocked by BKE and you, and uh, go from there. But you don't have to worry about it. it it's uh, funny. He, he's he's faking as a Knicks fan. He, he got the New York Forever as his name. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shout out Ralph, who's in the other room. Uh, agree, Lowry's a crafty bet after Wednesday. We got to give Nick Batum a look. Uh, Nick Batum, by the way, in each of the last two seasons, has scored one 20 point game in both seasons. One last night, which actually gets lost in the record books because play in games don't count for regular season or postseason stats. And then once randomly in December of last season. And that's it. Do you remember when he hit the. It wasn't a game winner, but it's when he tied the Knicks game last season. Yeah, he was on the, Clippers. He was on the cor- the right corner, or the left corner, right? It was a corner three. It was the right corner. I just posted a video about it because <laughs> I was like flashback. Hold up, like Nick, Nick to- Batum. This reminds me of something from last season. Like I, I very vividly remember that corner three going in. Uh, I think he was on the wing, or it was on the corner, but I'm like. Batoon, out of out of everyone. I mean, what he, like I don't even know what he was averaging last season. <clears throat> this season they said he's averaging five points per game. I and, can't imagine it was more than eight last year. Let's look it up. Yeah, and then he went off for 20 in the play-in, which is incredible. I think he had six threes. I mean, superpowers right there. Last year for the Clippers, this man averaged six points a game. It's pretty similar. He's actually he hasn't averaged over ten points a game since twenty eighteen. Wow. Sometimes you just make six threes in the game though, you know? <laughs> I feel like Bogdanovich is the type of guy to do what he did in the play in for us, uh, at one point in the playoffs. I feel like Bogdanovich can do that. Hit six three pointers, have twenty points off the bench, um, be hailed, you know, hailed as a hero. I think he can do it. I was actually I was, I was just talking about Bogey before he came on. We don't know if he's playing or not. Oh, he is of the wrist, wrist scope. Yeah, uh, I I thought I saw somewhere that they said he you know like he'll take it game by game and and see how it is. Um, no, they took Julius Randle game by game. <laughs> <sighs> I no, if we lose him, that's really gonna hurt because. You know, he's he's been stepping up the past few games before the regular season ended. He's in a nice stretch right now, putting up like almost, I don't know what his average is, you know, the past. I would say it's been a good five games for him, um, but it looks like he's been around 10 to 15 points 
for the last stretch of the season. And that's exactly what we need in the playoffs. Exactly that. Um, he finally got used to coming off the bench. It just took a while. Yeah. Which is, it makes sense. You know, he was, he was averaging a lot more minutes um, on the Pistons. So it's, it's hard for a player to adjust to bench minutes. Not a lot of time at all. So, I mean, I know we had it out for him, us Knicks fans. We had it out for both of him, both him and Alec Burks. I'm glad that he finally looked like he was in rhythm now, hitting good shots. I can only hope that he is going to be playing in the playoffs. I didn't even know the wrist, like the wrist thing kind of came as a shock to me. Same. Um, yeah. I think it came to all of us. And that, that, that hurts because we already have been dealing with so many medical issues this season. Another one would definitely hurt. That is facts. Uh, in in April, uh, this guy scored 16, 12, 9, 15, 3, 14, 9, and 13. So that's out of that one three-point game. He actually, he was averaging 12 points a game. And he's only playing like 15 minutes a game. So Solid. Uh, hoping, thankfully it's his non-shooting wrist. It is his left hand. Yeah. So hopefully that means he can come back. Uh, Next 2024 champs, uh, this guy, so if you, I don't know if you follow Chris Persianen on Twitter, but... Uh, he posted that la- yesterday bogey, um, according to multiple sources, bogey had a procedure where he got a wrist, uh, scope the, uh, scope is a longer word for the medical term, but he basically got his wrist scoped where they put a camera on your wrist. They check out if anything's wrong. They could actually do some stuff once they're in there, but if they actually have to do anything like fixing wise, I don't know any medical stuff, but they have to fix anything. Generally it's a four to six week injury. So we literally, Again, thankfully, it's his offhand, but we literally don't know if he's playing tomorrow, uh, Saturday. We don't know if he's playing at all this series. And with the Knicks, we're not going to find out until an hour before the game. (laughs) I'm trying to find the tweet I saw that said he, you know, he'd be good to go for the first game of the the playoffs. Uh, I believe it came from a trusted source. Um, I'll try to find it. That would be awesome. That would be uh, that would be great news. So you're saying it came from a trusted source and not the the hoop central, which posted today, and it got a lot of people. Uh, what was it? That that Tyler Hero and oh, Jimmy yeah. Butler almost came to blows on the on the team bus, and Jimmy just kept going nine to twenty seven, nine to twenty seven, and Tyler Hero That's swung hilarious. and missed, and he goes <laughs> nine to twenty eight, ah, which got to be the funniest thing. That's hilarious. Also, Tyler Hero trains boxing, by the way. So I feel like if this was ever really happening, he's probably connecting. <laughs> he he trains in boxing? Yeah, he trains. That's one of his uh, off-season things. I figured that out oh. actually by reading the comments, and I did some research. So there you go. Wow, that's interesting. But, I mean, I don't know. I, w- I wouldn't underestimate Jimmy Butler. He looks like he would be scary if he really wanted to fight someone. <laughs> oh, facts. 100%. 100%. Uh, Mill, since you jumped on when I was talking about uh, X-Factors, I want to do the Knicks first, but um, first, if you were to pick a 76ers X-Factor, uh, the rules are you can't pick Maxi or Embiid, basically. You can pick anyone else on the roster. Um, I would probably say don't pick Ricky Council Jr. since he's not going to play. Ricky Council the fourth. Wait, don't pick who? I mean, Ricky, I'm, I was just joking. Don't pick an end oh. of the bench guy. <laughs> it was just a joke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you were to pick one X-Factor, who are you picking? It's definitely not going to be Tobias Harris. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, you said don't pick Embiid or Maxi, but I think those two have to be the X factors in order for the Sixers to actually compete in this series. But another player that that could be huge for them could come up in some big moments. Um, Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, I yes. think that you know he he didn't he how many points did he have in the play? And I, I don't think it was too much. I believe it was 10, 11, maybe something like that. He didn't shoot that. Well. No one on their team played yeah, that well. The, no, the yeah, heat exactly. zone really got them. Uber had 11 points on nine shots. He did have eight rebounds though, and a steal and a block. So he did yeah. fill up the stat sheet. It, it did feel like he did have some big moments though. Some big energy moments that yep. definitely captivated the team and got them back at, um, in that comeback in the end of the game. So I think he could be, an X factor for the Sixers. I think especially about him is his energy, his um his grittiness. And you know, he he he's kind of he's a dog. You know, I'll give him that. He's a dog. There's been a lot of moments he's he had against dog. the Knicks where um, you know, he he just likes to boast. He just likes to show off if he makes a, a good bucket, if he gets a dunk, whatever. So I'm expecting that that type of energy when uh, we play them and you know, we have to reciprocate that. We have to bring it back to him. If they play hard, we got to play hard too. So I want to uh, Ben goes Buddy healed, which I mean, Buddy can always go off the same way that 
more likely than Nick Batum did or more likely than Bogdanovich did, but he's also uh, he's going to be a target on defense, obviously. Um, so it's going to be interesting when he's out there with the second unit. Uh, I do want, so I'm glad you said Ubre because I actually have some have some Jalen Brunson numbers. I before you came on, I went through all the Embiid numbers basically against iHeart and OG. It's the same thing I posted on the Knicks on the Big Energy Twitter today about how he hasn't shot well against both of them and he hasn't played Mitch in two years. Uh, yeah. So Kelly Ubre, who's covered who covered Brunson as the primary defender in all four games, uh, the Knicks Sixers this year. Um, Brunson only scored 17 points on Ubre across four games, shot only 31% from the field. Um, and what's wild about shooting 31%, he went one for 12 from two. He went four of nine. No, not one for 12. Uh, one for seven from two and four of nine from three. So he literally shot 44% from three. And then what's one of seven, like 18% from two or something like that. Uh, yeah. Ubre caused four turnovers and had a block on him. So he, he actually was the one of the closest things to shutting down Brunson so far this year. I'm curious if, if that's who they'll be going with most of the game. I mean, you know, switch offs happen, pick and rolls happen. So Brunson can always find his way around players like he usually does. But if he's guarding him most of the game um, with the stats, with the numbers you just presented, it, it could be an issue. Um, but I still have the utmost co uh, confidence in Brunson to just take it up a notch even further than what he has been doing in the regular season. Uh, I really expect him to just go crazy, like full on um, rampage mode. So even though Ubre has guarded him really, really well, and you know, he is a larger player, which really helps him to guard Brunson. Uh, I think that Brunson's game has developed so well, we, we could see him shoot better. It, it, and even if, Ubre is defending him really well to the point where he's not getting the shots he wants or he's struggling, you know, look to the other weapons. If Dante has it going, you know, that's, that's, that's always a great thing. If our, if our other Knicks players have it going that I think that'll be huge, honestly. Um, you know, you never know if Brunson's going to have a bad game. You don't know when you don't know if it could happen, but it could happen if Ubre is, is guarding him. Facts. Uh, I'm going to get into a couple of the other guys guarding him in a little bit. Uh, Ralph goes, Buddy and Batum both average about 38% from three. Uh, Lewis, uh, from, Lewis from Twitter goes, Maxi and 70% of beat are getting theirs. Just make sure to hold Kelly and Lowry in check. Uh, ben wants to know if you accept him as a Knicks fan. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, Knicks 2024 champs is asking someone in the chat, Kev Lowe, uh, do you think Indy poses less of a threat than Philly? I don't want to really, I think I'll, I'll leave that to them answering because I don't want to get into, I don't want to talk about round two when round one hasn't even started yet. I've seen way too much sadness and jinxes as a Nick Met and Jet fan for me to even pretend to do that right now. Um, Mill, so I wanted to actually talk about, so one of the other guys that covered uh, Brunson a lot this year, not as much as Ubre, it was Ubre for the most part of these games, but so Kyle Lowry only gave up six points in seven and a half minutes covering Brunson. Uh, and Brunson only shot one of five against Kyle. He didn't get matched up against Lowry nearly as much, but to the point of Kyle being a pest and a, somewhat of a Nick killer, shooting one for five against the guy that's your height when usually that's Brunson's bread and butter to torture guys that are six foot one, six foot two. Um, also, uh, not a level of concern, but something he's going to definitely have to attack. Do you remember if, Lowry was the primary defender on Brunson. I don't think he was in, in last year's series. I think that there was a really? lot of people guarding him. Uh, they put Butler on him a bit. They, uh, it yeah. was a lot of, I feel like it was a lot of Kayla Martin. I think Kayla Martin saw him. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Kyle got switched. The thing is, much to the point of the Heat game last night, they, they play more zone than any other team in the league. And, with their zone, it turns into a little matchup zone a little bit here and there, or one three one. Which the cool thing about one three one is that because the one is the point of attack, you you can have him get burnt and then you get into the the three wall, obviously. So yeah. I want to say it was mostly Kayla Martin, though. Yeah, that that's what I remember too. So mm, I mean, I'm not too worried with Kyle Lowry guarding him. Honestly, what did you say? He was one. He he only gave up five six points. Six points, one of five shooting, so he drew two fouls and made free throws. He is a pesty defender, despite you know being a smaller guard, being a smaller player. <laughs> um, and he's really smart and he's very intelligent, obviously, because he's been in the league so long. He knows how to defend 
guys like Brenton. He knows how to do it all. So mm, I, I still think that Brunson is going to cook every single one of them and average over 30 points per game in this series, um, similar to how he took over in Miami last year. Uh, I think we're going to, we're going to need it for at least a couple of games, you know, if nothing else, like the way the Knicks win this game, like they get the four wins, two of them are Brunson games. Like two of them are Brunson yeah. scoring 35 and eight plus assists at least. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, I think ahead. I found the tweet talking about, Bogey? about yeah, Bogdanovich. So it's from this reporter. I don't know how to say his last name. I'm sure you know him. Chris uh, Persianian. Oh, Chris Persianian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was Persian- talking about before. Yeah, Persianian. So he tweeted a few days ago. Wait, the 17th. Was that? Oh, that was yesterday. That's the so one saying said- he got the scope, right? I didn't. Is there a second part that I forgot about? Is that what? I think that's what it is. Oh, I probably just read into this too much. I mean, he he said, in short, he'll test it out and see no significant surgery for now. So he's going to test it out. Like, Bogey's going to test it out in probably game one and see how his wrist feels. Um, hopefully, it feels okay enough for him to keep going. But, you know, that's I- what he said in short. I hope so. The guy, he's terrible at defense. We all know that. He doesn't really, like, it's his offhand. So, like, he's still a shooter. Um, yes. He also said he, um, he's going to give the left wrist a go for the 2024 NBA playoffs and is not expected to miss time because of today's wrist. Uh, Arthroscopy. Yeah, I just say scope. I can't say that word. <laughs> yeah. So he's not uh, expected to, to miss time. I mean, I, I trust Chris. That's ideal. That would be ideal. Uh, also, for Bogdanovich, he's 35 years old. Like, the last time he was in the postseason and actually had a chance to make a run was with those Utah Jazz teams that, between Gobert and Mitchell, they yeah. never got past the second round. So, th- based on his age and where he's at and the fact that he basically, I'm sure he his agent knows it. He knows it. We as fans know it. Like, the part he took salary cap and asset team wise was that, hey, you're the new Evan Fournier. We will trade you at some point. Like, the guy probably knows, like, this might be my last chance to get deep in the playoffs. I've never gone beyond the second round. Like, he True. wants to play. Yeah, I, I, I think he does. I mean, he, he's looking more confident out there recently. I know the Knicks haven't played for a few days now, but for as I mentioned before, that last five, six game stretch of the season, he looked confident out there. And um, you can only hope that it translate to the postseason. And like you said, it, it's because this might be one of his only shots left at a deep playoff run. If the Knicks decide to move on from him. Facts. Ab- absolutely. I think, and I think he's going to want to play. And uh, I, I don't think, I don't think we want to see Alec Burks or shake Millen out there. So if we can get Bogdanovich, please no nice. Alec Burks minutes. I th- Alec Burks is gonna maybe not have. He's not gonna have a moment. I can't even convince myself. <laughs> it's just, it's not good for this team. As soon it's, as he's in there, it's, it's no. It's not good for my mental health. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Alec. Uh, Kev Lowe says I want more Dante three point shooting. He also goes. Uh, I feel that Dante is gonna be the plan B for the offense. Uh, Techler, Rory Williams, Frankson. Wow, that's a mouthful uh i anticipate nick nurse to incorporate his own defensive scheme against the knicks based on who they have at center uh i think it's really hard i think it's hard to incorporate his own defense against uh, a, a center like isaiah harnstein because the way you attack is that you get the ball into the nail and you try to hit uh corner threes or back cutters and i think i heart is not the type of dude you want to try to run that on with Mitchell Precious in the game, I could totally see a zone defense being something this guy incorporates. I just don't think against the starting lineup. Uh, Dominique uh, Paul goes Nixon five. Uh, D Buckets goes, they're going to blitz Brunson. We need Josh Hart to go to the middle and attack the paint or pass out to Dante and OG. Um, uh, Mill, I'll let you take this one. What do you th- uh, Coaching matchup in the series, who would you rather have, uh, Nick Nurse or Tom Thibodeau? Well, I mean, Nick Nurse has won championship, so he has a championship, a championship, not multiple. But I mean, I'll give him that. Like, you're a championship coach. Um, it's been a few years, obviously. So it look, took Kawhi I, Leonard, man. I don't know. I don't know how much credit I want to give Nick. That's true. I mean, Kawhi Leonard, incredible that year, absolutely incredible. So you know, you give it to him, really, who was able to do that and then 
uh, I mean, move on, but whatever. I'm going to say that Tibbs is going to learn from his mistakes from last postseason and adjust if he needs to adjust. And, you know, I'm going to give it to Tibbs. I, I feel like he's made a lot of great decisions this season. Um, Specifically, like, you know, benching benching guys over some guys, inserting Dante into the starting lineup. Um, a lot of great decisions I've, I've seen, and we can, you can only hope that he continues to do that. So I'll go with Tibbs. If, if he needs to na- make a, a really important substitution in the playoffs, I think he'll make it the right one. Yeah, I mean, the guy playing Deuce McBride over some of the other options he had, and uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm not going to say uh, Tibbs is the like a front office guy, obviously. like We have Leon Rose, World Wide West, Brock, like, et cetera, all those guys for that. But I do think part of them dealing Quinn Grimes and being willing to give Quinn Grimes was knowing that Deuce was ready, and that that's with Tibbs' approval. I think that's probably one of the best things he's done. That and... So earlier this year, before the OG trade, right, and we had we had RJ Barrett, we have Emmanuel quickly. We basically had one like NBA worthy playable power forward in Julius Randle. And yeah. the front office more or less made him be able to go small by playing RJ and or uh, Hart as the backup four. And I think that maybe indirectly through osmosis has made Tibbs be a more adaptable coach. Because I do feel like in the last year, year and a half, we've seen him be much more uh, free flow, not free flowing. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say adaptable again, but it's basically adapt- much more adaptable in the way he calls uh, his team and the rotations than he ever was in the 10 years prior. I think before this, it was like, hey, are you Luol Deng? Do you look like Luol Deng? You're playing 40 minutes. You're covering the best guy. Are you Derek Rose? Do you handle the ball like Derek Rose? You're getting the ball all the time and everything else is about defense. And I just think he's gotten way more, way more open-minded than that. Yeah, I like the open-mindedness. Um, you know, he, he's able to put different guys into different positions, something I was definitely nervous about to start this season because I definitely didn't think Josh Hart should be playing as a power forward. But, I mean, look where look where it's gotten us. I mean, still, I don't think he should be playing as a, at that position. You know, he's he's better off elsewhere, but um, it, it's... You can rebound great. like a power forward. He does. He does. He definitely does. Um, but still, it, he's put guys into different positions, and they've made it work as a team. They've all made it work, and that's that's impressive. You know, shorthanded. It's not it's not easy to coach a team shorthanded um, with dealing with a lot of injuries, and he's been able to to find a way to to put guys in the right position. And I really liked um, an, another shout out was when he started Deuce for that Golden State game which I really liked that decision right there. And then Deuce went off and defensively, you know, he did what he does. So I really like that. And then he continued to stay in the starting lineup. Um, So I really also do hope we, we, we get some Deuce minutes. We we will get Deuce minutes in the playoffs. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I fact, I actually think that there's a, there's a chance that I'm like, Deuce is not going to get more minutes than Josh Hart. So I don't want to like, have this said in a way that indicates that I think that's going to happen. That's not the case at all. I think Hart's going to play 35 to 40 one way or another, if not more, but I do think there's going to be a lot of like times, like real important, like game changing times in the game where he has Deuce McBride out there in a three guard lineup with uh, Brunson and DDB. And he has Deuce chasing around Maxi to, and like, he's going to have OG and I yeah. still out there. And it's going to be like by Deuce chasing Maxi and Deuce being more, more of a floor spacer than Hart. I think it's going to be a real, like a real a real advantage for us, even though Josh Hart is such a game changer in the way he plays the game for our team. I'm glad you brought the Golden State thing. The The biggest thing that indicated to me was the way Tibbs called the first Golden State game when we started out down 40 to nothing, or 40, 14 nothing and 20 to six with Precious starting at the four and then play the same exact team two weeks later with the same guys available. He puts Deuce in the starting lineup and then all of a sudden we're up uh, fourteen to two to start the game or whatever it was. Yeah. It was like, oh my god! Like I get it was two weeks in between the game, but it was like it felt like a game one to game two switch that you yeah. just did not think would have happened last year. It felt like a crazy, just it, it. It felt like a completely different game. I mean, uh, comparing those two and Deuce is a real, he's a real difference maker. Honestly, facts. 
He really is, and that's why that's why I think he's going to be so. I think he might be the sixth highest. Now, probably I would say probably fifth highest because I Hart and Mitch kind of cancel each other out. He might be our fifth highest minutes getter. Honestly, this series, Deuce McBride. I wouldn't be surprised, especially if he does what he can do against Maxi. And you no, know, because I already brought up the Embiid uh, offensive numbers, I got Jalen Brunson offensive numbers. Obviously, I got some Tyrese Maxi offensive numbers. So, do you want to hear what he's done against a couple of the Knicks players this year? Let's go. So, uh, OG Ananobi actually was one of his primary defenders this year. Uh, part of this was when he was on the Raptors. So, that's why OG actually played him four games, even though he only played him twice as a Knicks. So, it's two for each team. Uh, Maxi only attempted 11 shots over 15 minutes of game time. Which means he's getting the ball out of his hands a lot. He did get ten assists, which I think would is a pro anacon that OG actually got the ball out of him. Uh, he shot five of eleven, zero of two from three, uh, scored twelve points in fifteen minutes, and basically didn't do much. I mean, th- those aren't bad numbers, but when your second best or best player on the team isn't putting up like. This would have been adger- averaging less than 20 shots in a game, and if you're Maxi and you're playing with Embiid, you want 25 shots in the game. He's making it with the ball out of his hands. The only thing here is that he didn't get any blocks or turnovers out of him, so that could be a pro and a con. So OG did a decent job, and I think if OG does have any real weakness, uh, and by weakness I just mean not elite level top, level talent it's that covering smaller faster guards it's not like the fat and i mean the fastest of fast guards like he's not as i mean we've seen og play offense he's just not the most like flowing kind of guy kind of kind of looks like he walks a little weird you know what i mean like a gazelle yeah it's it's definitely going to be harder for him to guard smaller guys who are are quick on their feet and could blow by him um i feel like i noticed a little bit of that since he came back um from his injury the you know, the ending of the season. But still, I think what he did on Maxi was pretty solid. Um, ten assists is crazy. Wow. But yeah. He got the ball out of his hands and that that's his goal. Um and at that point it's on your teammates. Yeah, it, at that point it's exactly on your teammates for them to defend the perimeter, to defend the other the other players. So um if he gets the ball out of Maxi's hand, I mean that's the ultimate goal because you know Embiid, Maxi are the guys who are supposed to be scoring most of their offense. So you really leave it up to their other teammates. There's a less, a lower chance they're actually going to make the shot. Uh, exactly. I agreed entirely. Uh, what's funny is that Precious has actually played uh, Maxi the most games this year between uh, Toronto and Nick. So I'm going to read his in a second. Uh, Techler goes, good show. KFTV acknowledges your Nick's content. Salute, salute KFTV, salute Nick's film school. We always like, they're our goal to get to like those, one of those two shows levels, honestly. So them recognizing us uh, outside of making memes and t-shirts, that is lit. That's so cool. Uh, Showtime Nick was Isaiah Harnstein and Mitchell Robinson got this matchup against Embiid. OG is the X Factor. I think the Knicks will be okay without Randall. I didn't want to interrupt you. What were you about to say about the, the this one? My bad. Oh, I just said that's dope. Like, shout out to them. Um, I'm not sure when they acknowledge us, but that's really dope and awesome. We also got a shout out. The the thing I posted about OG and uh, iHeart covering Embiid actually got a shout out on uh, Nick's chat from Marshall Green before as well today. I was actually watching and commenting, and then he said he literally brought up our stuff. I was like, oh, oh damn, that's dope. Uh, Showtime Nick goes, Jones, that's just him. He's talking reckless last year after losing, saying he and Harden needs more help, and Harden's not who he was. This is probably about something that we didn't actually – I didn't read all the chats, so that makes sense. Never mind. Disregard. Yeah. Techler goes, press the like button. Salute, press the like button, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, Mill, so Precious actually covered Maxi in five separate games. Not that much overall. uh, Less than three minutes total, but it's funny. Uh, Maxi took 15 shots against Precious at two in three minutes. Jacking. I mean, it kind of makes sense, though. Like, you know, as soon as you get a guy like Precious on you, you're going to take over. Like, a guy like Maxi is just going to take over and chuck up shots. That's what it was. He was one of seven from three. He was chucking. He saw he saw Precious as a big and was like, I'm just shooting the shot. It's it's like that's the thing. I mean, it's funny because like every single guard or point guard, smaller guard, as soon as they they switch onto someone, whether whether it's a center, or someone taller than them, um, you know, they're they're taking that three. <laughs> 100%. Uh, are we better with or without Randall? We're going to get to the, We will get to that at some point. I want to get through this before we get into like really any hot take, hot take stuff. Um, so we had Precious, we had OG, 
Uh, this is the only one I didn't actually write down for, so I have to actually kind of scroll through a little bit because I had the Brunson and Embiid ones typed out. Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, he's, he went 7-17 seven against Dante in three games, 2-6 of six from three. Uh, Dante caused the turnover and had a block, uh, and he scored th- 16 points during that time. So Dante, 7-17 seven of 17 is only 41%, so that's, he did pretty good. It's and pretty didn't good, foul him yeah. once. No fouls. That's that's really solid. I'm I'm assuming you know he's going to be guarding Maxi. Yeah, and here's here's why I think Deuce McBride is actually going to get a real chance here. So against Deuce, it was only five minutes across three games. He didn't make a shot. Didn't make a shot. It was only all four, but he took less than a shot a minute and didn't make one. And Deuce caused the turnover. And he didn't make a three, and he fouled him a couple times, and that's how he got four points. But couldn't shoot on him. Yeah. I think I remember. It, you said it was five minutes. I think I remember that it, it was one time we played against them. I, I don't remember which game it was. Uh, I don't. Th- it wasn't the game we blew them out because in this particular game, it it was close, and um, I believe we had a lead. They was were, it the game that you went to that was the lowest scoring game of the year? No, because I think we ended up winning this game. Oh, it's so probably the one two days later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That wasn't the blowout. No. So we won 106-79. Uh, we lost to the one game 79-73. We won 110-96, and then the first game was the blowout. They well, Honestly, three of these weren't close. 128-92. to yeah, so, yeah, so probably the most recent one. You said the second one. Um, in that when Philly was coming back, it was mainly Maxi, obviously, because they didn't have Embiid. And then Deuce was put on Maxi that fourth quarter. I don't know if you remember that, like locked him yeah. up completely. They didn't come back. They weren't able to even get a lead on us and obviously didn't win the game. So I uh, yeah, I remember those minutes. Those were good minutes. Do you want to hear how crazy? Just to go back to the free the, the rebounding thing, how crazy this rebound discrepancy is that we the four times we played them. Go the last ahead. the last game we won one hundred six seventy nine. We out rebounded them by twenty fifty one to thirty one. Oh. The game we lost seventy nine seventy three. The worst game maybe of my lifetime offensively. Uh, we won. This is the closest rebound battle. We still won fifty to forty-seven, but they actually almost they kept it close rebounding wise, and then won that one game. The game we won one ten to ninety-six. We out rebounded them by seven forty-five to thirty-eight, and then the one we dominated that had both OG and Embiid play uh, one twenty-eight to ninety-two. We out rebounded them uh, by nine forty-nine to thirty-eight. So on average, we out rebounded them by nine seven three. So that's up to nineteen. 20, 39. We out rebounded them by almost 10 rebounds a game. 10 a game. Wow. That's that's huge though. And I, I definitely think rebounding is a huge part, obviously, of winning games. And we have so many great rebounders on this team. I mean, Josh Hart at 6'4 is doing it probably the best on this team. He's uh on the season, he's averaging 8.3 re- rebounds per game. Yeah. Uh, Hardenstein, he's at 8.3 as well. And Precious, he's at 7.2. Let's see, Mitchell Robinson, only in 31 games, he's averaging 85. I mean, he has the most. But incredible. We have so many great rebounders that, of course, we're going to out-rebound, I'm pretty sure, like almost all of our opponents. Um, so, yeah, I, I expect all of them to just go out again and – Grab those boards, grab those offensive rebounds, which could be huge as well. I expect Josh Hart to have 10 plus rebounds every game. I'm the hoping. one thing, the one thing from the Sixers chat that me and uh, Nick's 2024 champs were, were when we were trolling before. Obviously, what's funny is that, like, to go into the opposing, like, the enemy front line kind of thing, it's like, 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 there's like, it's 10 on two, like, we're getting attacked, like, Nick's, like, Pacers, or Pacers, Sixers and five, Sixers and six, Sixers and four, yeah. Sixers and three, like, all that stuff, right? Like, you guys say Philly cheese take, you're lame, obviously it's cheese take, your chopped cheese ain't nothing, bodegas are crap, blah, 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 um, <laughs> all that stuff, you know? Uh, the one thing that someone actually wrote that was, like, like, a semi-real, like, self-actualization thing that they had to worry about was... Damn, Josh Hart's really going to get 12 rebounds every game. I can't even handle <laughs> this right now. 
<laughs> They're about to see. They are going to see because Cat Josh Hart made so many em- enemies last season when we played the Cavs because he oh was my God. single-handedly out rebounding both of their bigs and everyone hated him for it because you know I just said it he's six four he's a smaller guard who's out rebounding your bigs uh, I just know a lot of Cavs fans have it out for him till you know still to this day because of that and if he does it to Philly more enemies <laughs> Yeah, uh, Josh Hart is why I like literally have videos saying the Cavs are baby ass from Talcum Par Outer Soft. It's because of Josh Hart spe- yeah. and Mitchell Robinson specifically, those two guys. He really uh, owned that series. Oh my God. Rebounding. You don't even need to score. Just yeah, get the ball every time. Just rebounding. Showtime Nick goes, let the Sixers talk. I'm pretty sure the Knicks won three out of four if they did um, against the Sixers this year. The six, the Knicks creamed the Sixers, the one game MB played that they did. Uh, AP goes, keep them off the foul line. I don't trust the refs with this betting stuff. It's always in the back of my mind with these refs. Uh, Mill, who do you think is more likely to foul merchant better? Actually, I don't know if you would ask you this, but I'll ask anyway for the hell of it. Who's going to be a better foul merchant this series, Joel Embiid or Jalen Brunson? I wish I could say Jalen Brunson. Like I would, res- I wouldn't even care if he tried to go all out and draw so many fouls the way Embiid does. But we already know it's going to be Embiid. How many free throws does he average a game this season? Do you know? I'm I think guessing it's, it's over ten. It's over ten. Yeah, I'm guess. I was gonna say, I'm guessing it's over ten. It's too I, damn much. That's what it is. <laughs> that's the one thing that is going to irk me this series. You know, I was, th- I was like weighing the options, thinking about who I want. Do I want Miami? Do I want to see Bam Adebayo set 10 illegal screens a game? Or do I want to watch Joel Embiid shoot 10 free throws a game? Which one's more annoying? Probably the illegal screens because they don't get called. But, you know, we're facing Philly, so we have to deal with those free throws. We have to deal with those refs. But, uh, you know, he he has that superstar whistle. He has that MVP whistle. He is going to get it every time, even if they lay a hand on him, even if they lay a finger on him. And, you know, maybe he goes to pump fake. Maybe he goes to put it up. They're calling it. And B, the, remember the, the 70 point game he got against Wemby in the Spurs? Yeah. He had the highest point uh, total of the year, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he took 23. Are you kidding me? 20? I would not. I'm glad I didn't watch that game because how do you how do you watch a game like that and watch someone take 23 free throws? It's and a three-hour game. It takes forever. Yeah. It, it slows down the game. It stops the game. It's so annoying to watch. I mean, just you don't need to you don't need to draw that many fouls. You don't. <laughs> I I mean I'm hope what sucks is that he, he's definitely going to get more calls than us. It's just a matter of please keep it somewhat fair. I just if there's a game where like they're like just two ticky tack fouls and Hartenstein within four minutes, and then all of a sudden Mitch is two fouls oh, four minutes God. later, and we're stuck playing Precious to the five, and he literally can't even touch the guy. Imagine I if we get to the point did. that we get to Jericho Sims playing because he keeps getting everyone in foul trouble with some BS Scott Foster crap, like. I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to literally go insane. I'm worried about game three going that exact same way. The first game of Wells Fargo. Yeah, I can already see it. One of them, Hardenstein or Mitchell Robinson getting foul trouble. Um, I'm glad that we have both of them, though. And they're both great centers. So, you know, if one gets in foul trouble, the other one is reliable, still a great defender. Um, But I can already see it. You know, you probably just, you probably just said the future. (laughs) I... Confucius Joe sometimes sometimes makes himself sad, you know? I need I need a hat. I need like a little wizard hat, but it has a frown yeah. on it. <laughs> you painted the picture so well that I can see it happening. I'm I'm sorry. Once we get to Jericho Sims in the second quarter and all three of the other guys have three fouls each, it's gonna be like, damn it, Joe, why did you even say that? <laughs> and then, you know, the entire Twitter X timeline is gonna say, just just go off on Jericho Sims. Oh my god. Yeah, it's all <laughs> his fault then at that point. Game. They go off on him. Yeah, dude, it's not his fault, man. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, he's our centering center. He gets, like, I don't even know the last time he got minutes. I mean, like, real minutes. But anytime he's in there, they, they hate it. Give the guy a break. He's a great fro. Uh, shout out to 585 in the chat, 552 on Twitter, 33 on uh, YouTube. Uh, for everyone that doesn't know, again, we have a sponsor autograph for the, for the postseason. The link is in our description on YouTube. Really cool app. Uh, what they're doing is basically they put all NBA content for one team on one page, 
all college basketball content for one team on one page. For the Knicks, for example, they have all Big Nick Energy stuff, all KFTV stuff, all Knicks Film School stuff. Fans like you and I can add articles we read and podcasts we read from other places all onto the app so you can find everything there. Download Autograph. Make sure you use our, our code BKE. It's in the description as well. Uh, make sure you sign up before noon tomorrow and get 200 points. The way you get 200 points, you get 30 for a podcast listen, you get 15 for an article read, you get 30 to watch a YouTube video. And by the way, the YouTube video is all the shorts we post, the 20 second shorts that gets you 30 points. So you can get to 200 really quick. You get to 200, you qualify to enter, to get a chance to win two Knicks tickets for dirt cheap money. It's not quite free. But they'd be $24 each. And even if you didn't go to the game, you win the tickets, you sell those, you 10x your money, and then there you go, all for downloading an app and listening to podcasts and videos you would listen to anyway. So download Autograph, BK, it's in the description. Make sure you check it out. Mill. Yeah, 100%. I, I have been watching our stuff on that <laughs> app so far. So um, cool. I really love how they put all of the Knicks content in one feed one section i mean i i haven't seen another app do that and i feel like it's so cool like we're like creators and we see our stuff plastered um on this app as if like i don't know it, it, it's just cool you know it's so cool it's so dope Teresa uh, said hey joe and mill how are you doing what's your predictions are you going to have a watch party i'm good how are you joe I'm doing good. You know, I'm hanging out. I don't know if we're having a watch party. Uh, Vin and I might be, we might be doing one in Newburgh, New York, which obviously is invite everyone, a lot of people. Uh, we are still trying to figure that out. Uh, we will get back to you by before game four or five, knowing for sure if we're doing a watch party. Uh, we should know by the end of this weekend, honestly. We'll be able to get back to you guys. Mill, since it says it right here, though, uh, what is your prediction for the series? Uh, the record? Yeah. Nixon three? I'm taking uh, Nixon three. <laughs> I I want to say Nixon five, but I don't know if they just win one game. I really don't. So I'm going to say Nixon six. I'm doing it. I said it before you got here. I'm doing Nixon five. I just, the, the rebounding thing, the Embiid hurt thing, yeah. the, the way this team is meshing and gelling. The fact that three of our players are already Philadelphia heroes because of Villanova helping them win two titles. Like, I just, if Embiid was fully healthy, I as a Nick fan and slight homer would still say Nixon seven, but he's just not. He's not healthy. And it's clear as day. So it's just, I, like, I couldn't believe the, I can't believe people are homers. Your team's in the playoffs. Uh, Sixers fans got to hear all year that if they were healthy, they were 31 and eight, they were 30 and eight with Embiid, they would have been competing with Boston. <laughs> the Knicks are 20 and three with OG, which last I checked, 20 out of 23 is a better percentage than 30 out of 38. It is basic <laughs> little, little math lesson for you guys yeah. there. <laughs> um, but he's just not, and I'm just gonna go Knicks and five. I don't even care, I don't care. I really hope you're right. Honestly, I would love to beat them in five games. I mean, that would just show like we know how serious we are, obviously claiming this, the second seed, getting to 50 wins. <laughs> but it would really show the other NBA fans, non Knicks fans, how serious we are, um, because, you know, they keep saying, oh, Philly's going to be tough They They were supposed to be the second seed. They have Embiid who looks healthy. So if we do actually beat them in five. We're going to light up that Sixers pack. We are going to light up that Sixers pack. Techler goes the light from your headset makes me want to smoke in black and mild. Someone said that last time. It's <laughs> actually really funny. We're getting high in that. Getting high in that. You know what I'm saying? You know what the, you know the, what the best type of, you know what the best type of weed is, Mill? I don't. That, that maxi weed. It's max grade. And we're going to be smoking Tyrese maxi all, all, all series long. I don't see him going off in this I don't series. either. He hasn't gone off against us. I mean, maybe his... I don't know if you know his highest point game against us. I don't think it was over 30. I will he get back to you real quick on that. Um, yeah, no, you're good. You're good. But, 17 points on March 12th. Thir oh, he did score 35 uh, oh. on February 22nd. We won the game, though. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and then where is it? March... Uh, I think he missed one game, maybe. 
And then 27 uh, January 5th when Embiid got his... Th- so that's the thing. A lot of these, it's like the way the games went was that Maxi and Embiid both got to their 30, but it was super inefficient. And the rest of the team... Is so- that's the thing. Outside of Embiid and Maxi, like, who do you who do they actually have that's going to show up? It's not going to be Nicholas Batum again putting up six threes like I guarantee you that doesn't happen in our series um I know like I mentioned to you he hit that uh game time three last season but we've learned from that and if the Knicks I'm sure they were watching the play-in game they're not gonna let him go off if he gets the minutes exactly and he's not gonna go off unless unless it's 5v8 like Techler says these goddamn refs Mill, if Embiid gets more than fifteen free throws in a game, I, I might not have. I might not be doing podcasts with you anymore. I might be break, breaking my computer. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Ben, with a W comment for Ben, you can go to the Barclays easily for twenty four dollars without having to win a contest. <laughs> That's not something to be proud of, is it? I mean, like, I mean, it could be. You know, cheap it's tickets are funny. nice. Cheap tickets are nice. But if your tickets are really, really cheap, I think your team is not that great. They're, it's not. It's not. Uh, Especially New York City. So, bro, number one, what's up, fam? Say you DM after signing up yesterday. That means anyone that does sign up and actually lets us know they signed up means they have two entries instead of one entry for the contest. But you have to get the first entry by getting the 200 points. The second entry is for sending us the DMs. Just for everyone to know that's done the done the Instagram or Twitter um, promotion part that we're running as well. Anyone that DM'd us, as long as we hearted it or responded in any way, shape, or form to indicate we got it, you have a second entry, just for everyone to know for the thing. Uh, Abdul goes, It's I know it's cliche, but we have to win game one. We need to make a statement not catching up. The Sixers, uh, based on what I've like remembered and seen recently, they actually have a good proponent of winning game one and then still losing the series, which... Oh. I th- which Kind of could be Doc Rivers related based on the guy just having a really good knack of blowing it. So now that they have Nick Nurse, I feel like it's not as likely that they would win game one and lose the series. So I do agree. Winning game one and setting the tone is 100% a must. Um, The past few years, they've, they've also like mainly had home court advantage though, right? Like game one has always usually been in Philly for them. Yeah, well, I remember vividly last year, like when Embiid was out, Harden won Game One in Boston and dropped oh, that forty-point game. Yes, and then he also dropped yes. what was it, nine in Game Six at home, and they lost in six. Just that was peak crazy. Harden. Like when he went off in that first game, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, wait, no, they lost in seven, but yeah. Uh I was like, he's carrying this series. He's going to carry Philly. And then, you know, I, I think his averages obviously went down for the rest of the, the series. Um, and obviously they lost. But we have home court advantage, which should be helpful because last season when the Cavs came into our court, into our home court, they did not win a game. They went home. So I'm really excited to watch Nick's playoffs in MSG again. I mean, our crowd is just different. MSG is different. The lights are bright, so if you can't handle it, sorry, sorry for you. If um, only Jared maybe, Allen played somewhere that wasn't the Barclays for twenty four dollar tickets, maybe he would have been more used to it. <laughs> you know, wait, didn't he used to play there? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why. That's why I said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I really think that playing in MSG could be a real advantage. I mean, momentum. Look how the momentum shifted Philly in that playing game. I honestly think winning free chicken helped them. It's so funny how much people love free food. Yeah, uh, it's they never so, do that at MSG though. No, they they spend too much money there. They're not going to do that. They make you pay five hundred dollars for your ticket, and you're in game free nothing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then like ten, fifteen dollars for a water. Yeah, uh, the New York experience, you know. Well, that was another thing they were talking about today on the other on the Sixers Talk podcast that we listened to um, and trolled on. Uh, they're worried about New Yorkers invading the Wells Fargo Arena, and I responded, "Yeah, of course we're going to wait invade the Wells Fargo Arena. It's cheaper for us to drive down there, buy a yeah. ticket, go to the game there, drive all the way back after eating. We could do all five of those things for the same price. We can get parking in New York City." <laughs> I, yeah, I already know so many people are going to the games in Philly. And you know what's really funny? I don't know if you remember the ad I did for the Knicks. It was uh, I used. Uh, Didn't I you go to a Philly game? So the thing is, I, I took Amtrak 
to Philly and then I took it back to New York just to show like, you know, you can use it to go there to come back. Yeah. And now we're playing them in the playoffs, which is like really ironic to me because that was back in March. And then no, you get free yeah. tickets, you get an Amtrak ticket. Yeah. And, you know, and it, if people still see that ad, use Amtrak, go to the Philly games. <laughs> no, I'm saying you get a free ticket now, though. You get some free free playoff oh, tickets. No, that was back then. <laughs> Ah, the difference between March and April is only like three hundred dollars each, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Nick's cave goes. Uh, Nova Nick's will outscore, rebound, and assist Maxi and Embiid. I, I mean, three on two, and one of them is Jalen Brunson, and Jalen Brunson can outscore. Dante Divincenzo can outscore, help outscore, and assist. Both of them would do both, and then Josh Hart does all the rebounding and assisting. I agree. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Hart gets more rebounds than Embiid. I mean, he's averaging 11, I think, on the season, Embiid. But some <coughs> some games Josh Hart has over 10. Some games he has 15. Yeah. The last four games for Embiid, uh, was, he had 15, 13, 11, and 12. So, I mean, maybe maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, that's but his, his season average. Wow. But he's only he's seven foot two or one of the best centers in the league. I would imagine he's gonna rebound some. The fact that Josh Hart's six foot four and a half and he does it is much more, much, much more impressive. One hundred percent. Marshall goes the plane was good tape. I totally agree. Teresa goes the Nick NBA is not taking the Knicks seriously. Barkley and Shaq. No. What happened with Charles Barkley almost being on our side for like four days? The guy no, literally what? went from saying that the Knicks were the second best team in the East, and then within one play-in where they didn't even look good, the Sixers, he goes, nah, the Sixers got it, man. He just immediately remembered that he was a Sixer at one time, and then immediately just went against the Knicks. And Charles, if you were just doing it because you were a former Sixer, I would understand, but you've been clowning LOL Knicks for years and years and years, and now that we're actually good. You don't get that leeway, man. You don't. You're a clown. Your your clown takes. You're not doing it because you're you were a Sixer or a Son. You're doing it because you're doing LOL Knicks, and you literally just said you thought the Knicks were the second best team in the East, and you went back on your word within one quarter of a day. You could have been Kendrick Perkins Jr., buddy, but you got no rings. You got no takes. Charles, you make me sad as a bald man, and I love bald men, bro. Pause. Whoa. <laughs> 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 that's crazy i actually didn't see the clip that he said sixers have it they got this series he did in the, he did it last night yeah after wow the that's wild i'm not surprised though the tnt crew they all hate us they all hate they, the knicks every time a game is televised on uh tnt they just have the most bs to say about the knicks even if the knicks are winning that game and if, even if they do win it, it's hardly ever good things to say. It's hardly ever any good coverage at all. Um, I'm not sure what their whole dilemma, what their whole problem is with us Knicks, but I don't care. I really don't care what they have to say. <laughs> uh, I know they were professional players and, you know, their opinion, you know, people think they're higher than the average folk, but we know, we know what our Knicks are capable of. Come on, Knicks, Knicks and six, six and five, you said. Nixon, I'm doing Nixon five. I don't care. Uh, shout out state. Apparently he wanted to come on. I'm just seeing this now. Shameful to have no link to this pod. Have some shame. Uh, state. Yo, next time we come on, you can, you can come on. I'm not going to stop you. I don't, we don't always post the stream yard. We've only done one open panel or two. Open yeah. Panels. We, we never post the link state. I'm sorry. We just, we never have it out there in the chat, but we got to start doing it more often. I think we should, we should plan. I like planning it. Cause I like, like I go through like some time and effort to like get like, topics and like all the stats and stuff going like for us to do open panel versus like a regular like like pod like i'm down for it um so what's what's today thursday right we play saturday are you doing a post game saturday mill yeah i'm gonna try to i i've been trying to see what watch parties are going on on saturday so if i don't go to watch party then yeah i'll be able to i haven't found one that that you know i'm going to yet because um, the Knicks fan TV one is apparently 21 plus. So I don't know if I'll be there legally. <laughs> State goes, you got to submit the link. Stop this nonsense Monday. You'll got time. I don't want to hear it doing a Monday podcast period. I actually should be able to do Monday because I'm going to be here doing the same shift I'm doing now. Seven to three where I'm doing breaks. I'm free for like an hour and a half. So speaking of which we do have to get off the next five to 10 minutes, just throwing it out there. So state, I will be, we'll be more than happy to have you come on Monday, man. Totally down. 
yeah, I, I definitely want to talk to more people like um, and have them come up here, hear their opinions. It, it's cool. You know, the people that watch us, I want to hear what they're thinking, too. I mean, I know most of them comment it, but it's different talking with someone one on one. Also, shout out State's podcast. Uh, anyone check him out. He's on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, all the all that good stuff. Uh, State, one thing. Now that you, since you've been doing more and more about the YouTube game, biggest things you'll notice: thumbnail, title, tags, buddy. It, uh, you can have the best co- takes and the best content and the best Twitter following in the world. YouTube's different: tags, Hold title, on. thumbnail, and thumbnail and title are the biggest two. Tags is like a far third. Yeah, I I don't even know all of it yet because you do most of it, so. Yeah, it's a it's a process. You get, I mean, we uh, you get a system. We figure out like the word, you know. It, you just get used to it sooner or later. Uh, Marshall goes Barkley looking sick and delusional when he spoke. <sighs> Charles Barkley. Uh, Knicks twenty twenty four champ says the Sixers said the Knicks were the worst two seed in history. It's really funny when people say that. Uh State's going to get better at it once the season is done. And then Mario goes, I hope we get them for talking shit about us being an easier team. Obviously, yes, Boston's crazy. But just don't say it out loud. Keep it to yourself. It's the fact that it was Paul Reed. That's even the oh, more yeah. aggravating, stupid. Oh, I talked about it before you came on. Mill, if you're the backup what? center, if you're the backup center and you average four points and five rebounds in a game, are you going on a podcast or national TV and giving the other team bulletin board material? Do you think Jericho Sims would go on a podcast and give no. someone bulletin board material? Oh no, he is not doing that. That man doesn't even speak like regularly, so he's not doing that. First of all, um, I would respect it if one of our centers said it. I mean, like Mitchell Robinson is a dog hard hardenstein's a dog uh paul reed who had I, like where'd he come from and why is he saying this right now i mean paul it, reed is from orlando florida <laughs> which seems like a place that hates new york so yeah so he probably has that hatred inside of him since you know he was born but anyways that comment he also, is crazy he's also from depaul uh, I'm pretty sure his freshman year was one of the second Villanova uh, title. So not only does he hate New York, he hates Villanova because DePaul and Villanova are both in the Big East and he had to deal with that crap. Uh, it's just, you average 7.3 points and six rebounds and assists a game. You're the backup four or five. You just yeah. don't. If if Joel Embiid said it and he gives him Baltimore material, so be it. It is what it is. He's one of the best players. He believes that he truly oh, is. Oh yeah, of course. You're effing Paul Reed. You're Paul Reed, bro. I was just confused. What is the platform he said it on? I saw the clip really. Fanduel quickly. TV. Like he said it was... with Shams on Fanduel TV. I didn't even like that. I... Why is he doing an interview on field? FanDuel TV like right now before the playoffs begin because I don't know if that's just strange to me. How I, many I people do you think they try to ask before they finally got someone to say yes that was <laughs> Paul Reed? <laughs> Pretty much everyone and then he was the last person but like we know none of our Knicks are going on interviews right now doing like I mean they're doing the official interviews but or their they're own doing, podcast. <laughs> it looked like a podcast at first. I mean I, I, I didn't see Shams but Wow. I was like, what is he doing right before a playoff game starts? And he's talking like all this ish on some podcast, some random podcast. But, you know, it, it was official. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. AP goes, of uh, of course, Barkley's going to root for his old team. The Knicks and Rangers are all going to the way. 94th, 30th anniversary. Facts. I mean, that's the thing. Charles Barkley, I get that he was a Sixer. I understand. It's one of his two main teams, the Sixers and the Suns. It's the fact that the LOL Knicks and he literally... Like, if the Knicks played the Heat, maybe Barkley's trying to, like, and I guarantee you a lot of people would be picking the Heat national media-wise, and maybe that's the Barkley zag, is that he would have picked the Knicks because he had just said they were the second-best team. It's that, for, like, four seconds, he was pro-Knicks, and then it just, Thanos snapped away. It's wild. Honestly, I have no words for it at this point. I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> just disappointed. Like a sad parent. I'm not I'm not surprised. Just <laughs> just disappointed in the TNT crew. <sighs> uh, Mill. Yeah. Mill, you got any uh I I do have to get off by midnight. I don't know if you want to stay on and keep this going or 
Um, yeah, I'll probably get off with you. I mean, I was on here for a little bit with you. I'm sure you got to a lot before me. Yeah, I based well, the things I brought up before you were uh, the Paul Reed thing, which we just went over again, and yeah. a uh, and the beginning of. Oh, let's go. We got a Sixers fan. Shout out you, DB Sixers and Six. You're wrong. You screwed. I'm sorry. It's night night time for Joel Embiid. He's about to go on more podcasts in the off season, and he's gonna be like, "Oh no, I just want to win a title. I don't know what happened. I don't know where I'm going." Him and Giannis both are gonna be saying the same thing, but it ain't gonna be for W's. There's no Jameis Winston out here. <laughs> Mill, sign up for Autograph. Download the app. Use code BKE. Listen to some stuff. Get your chance for a chance to win tickets. Escobar goes Nixon four. Yeah, I was just about to highlight that. And what else do you got for the rest of the people the rest of the night? Guys, I mean, we play in... I- I'll say right now is Friday. It's three minutes to midnight. There's... We have to get through like one more day and Knicks playoffs begin. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I mean, <clears throat> if you're going to the game, enjoy it. Enjoy that. I mean, uh, you're rich, first of all, and just enjoy that. But if you're going to a watch party, enjoy that as well. I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, this 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 Same. city feels different when the Knicks um, are actually in the playoffs. And then the Rangers are two right they're in the playoffs or are they like pass yeah they're the one seed they're actually they won the president's cup they had the most points db i'm glad you're joining in an hour and 30 minutes in to listen to us as knicks fans i appreciate it from a sixers fan uh since you're on twitter come to our youtube page uh start from the beginning and i gave you a lot of stats to indicate why I don't think Embiid or Maxi are going to do that well and why you guys are going to lose. Actual stats, not just us being like, oh my god, the Knicks are better. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah, that yeah. it's been 90 minutes, and at this point, I'm shutting down, and it, and Mill wants to go to sleep, even though, and I've worked till 3 a.m., and I'm at my job, and I'm supposed to do other stuff. So if you're not going to find out now, that's on you, buddy. And if you don't know who Mitch Robinson, Isaiah Harnstein, or OG and Anobi are, then you're a cash, and your team's going to lose anyway. I don't care. I mean, DB, I, I just have a question for you. You know, you're asking a lot of questions in the chat. And, I mean, do you think your star player, Joel Embiid, is actually going to sustain a full-on series with the Knicks? A six, seven-game series even. You think he's actually going to sustain that? Look how exhausted he looked in that playing game. And, you know, that's with him, that's him with a few days rest. He sat out that last regular season game so he could get that extra day. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but he doesn't look 100% out there. And <laughs> I'm going to stop. But, you know, a, a good reason you guys won that game is because Nicholas Batum went off. Your other players were really struggling. Escobar saying it, not me, man. He said he'll be dead by game two. I said before, before you came on to listen to this at the very end, if you were to set Embiid playing the whole whole series over under three and a half games, I'd probably take the under. I just don't see it happening. And Mill, with that, and all 650 people that are listening to us, 627 on Twitter, 24 on YouTube, let's go Knicks. Everyone have a great night. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Much appreciated. Knicks in five, baby. Knicks in five. Good night, guys.